What's up everybody, it's Prion Joni, and this is part two of my home studio build series. So there was a lot of troubleshooting I had to do with the speaker placement. I wasn't sure if I wanted to actually put it on the desk or use the stands that I already had and put them on the sides. And I decided so that I'll have more room on the desk, I put them on the stands. Right now, I still don't have a proper interface, so I'm still using my Rain SL3, which has six inputs and six outputs, all unbalanced. And I have it also routed to my old DJ mixer, the Pioneer DJM 300, which routes straight to the speakers. Now I did some troubleshooting and one of the problems that I've always had with using this mixer was that it has normal RCA outputs and in order to get the best clarity to the studio monitors I need to use balance outputs so I took out one of my direct boxes and converted it to a balanced XLR output. Now the problem with a passive direct box is that it cuts a lot of the volume down by a lot. So when I was setting up the racks on the left side, one of them is my headphone distributor. The other is a DVX drive rack, which is a PA management system. It's a crossover, your EQ. It's not really meant for the studio. However, I was sitting on the toilet and I was thinking to myself, I was like, wait, hold up. This thing has an RTA mic input, which a lot of studio tuning gear has to flatten a room's EQ. Now, I don't have an RTA mic. I'm actually planning on ordering one. So what I did was I took the output from the direct box and routed it straight to the drive rack as a balanced signal. I boosted the drive rack at the crossover point. I think that's probably the best place to do it. And then I set a limiter where when the speakers are really, really loud, but you know, a good amount just right under before they start to really peak. And what I plan on doing is I plan on flattening the EQ after I do the acoustic treatment using the RTA microphone. Using something that's not really made for a studio, I'm going to even the EQ so that the listening position will be flat. And I'm probably gonna use this drive rack maybe until I get a real interface. There was also a lot of decisions I was making. The laptop, I couldn't decide if I wanted it on the top platform or on the bottom. I figured that being on the top, it's way too far and I just couldn't read it when I sat down. Originally, I had my M Audio controller on the keyboard stand, and I decided I'm gonna start consolidating. There's nothing that I do on the M Audio Axiom controller that I can't do with the accelerator, so I figured it's time to go. I gave the M Audio Axiom away. I made a Facebook post on it. The problem with the accelerator, and it's not really a big deal, but the accelerator is a really large synthesizer. So basically, I moved the laptop, down to the platform and I had to move the keyboard and my trackpad to the same tabletop. Right now, uh, it feels comfortable to have it up here rather than down here. It feels more like I'm on the laptop versus being separated. I know on my old desk, it just felt so almost like disconnected. Well, it's Bluetooth. It is disconnected. <laughs> I'm gonna try this out. Uh, one of my concerns is this is white. I'm, I'm probably gonna stain it right here, but that's not a big deal. This table has a ledge for wire management, and I did the best I could to keep it as clean as possible. Uh, I haven't zip tied or Velcroed anything down yet. You might be asking what I use the iPad for. I actually have an application, I've showed it before, where I use a, an app called Dock Control. Now this iPad is old, it's obsolete, but the app still works fine. It's just, uh, control that I use for Ableton. Temporarily, I put up three of my bass traps and I lifted it a little bit using a couple stacks of the foam so that this side would reach that little weird thing on the wall, like right here. I'm not gonna keep these bass traps the way they are. I actually ordered the 24 by 12 by 12 squares so that I can actually put them right there in the corner and then add the corner traps on the outside so they'll be twice as large, hopefully twice as effective. We'll see how that goes. So one thing I gotta mention, I placed the desk to be enough space so I could walk behind it easily. Well, 
it's a, it's pretty easy. It's not that easy, but that also gave me enough space away from the wall so that the speakers don't resonate so much. Now, the other thing is, is I'm supposed to do that, but if the room is too square and your listening position ends up being in the center, it's better to be closer to the wall, but that's not the case here. My distance from the wall and distance from the sides are pretty good. It's over a foot, maybe a foot and a half from the side walls. So this was part two of my home studio build. For part three, I'm still waiting for my order of acoustic foam coming in. That should be here any day now. And once I start treating the walls, that's gonna be part three. If you like this video and you wanna keep up with my series of my home studio build, be sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, thanks for watching guys. Take care.